Oxygen with low kick MMA. I'm your Shan Ross, who makes his UFC UFC debut on February 11th at UFC 284 in Perth. Shan, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, super pumped for the debut, obviously, and on a on a massive pay per view card, 284 with the the who's who of the best talent in the world, and yeah, I get to make an appearance there, so that excites me. Yeah, man. Um, 20 day. You're about 20 days out. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good. Um, camp's been going great. Obviously, I haven't had any visa troubles or any passport issues or any appendicitis this time. So, it's a, yeah, it's all all rolling smoothly, man. It's good. Yeah. So, um, before we even talk about your fight, I wanted to talk about your epic Dana White's Contender Series fight. Firstly, fighting with appendicitis, what kind of fucking savage are you? <laughs> I'm an, an Australian savage, man. Um, I think we're bred a little bit different down here. We're, uh, we're tough as nails and yeah, we uh, we get the job done, what we what we sign up to. And yeah, I'd like to, to represent and show that if you sign the dotted line, you got to get there. There's none of these little niggles. And if I can fight with appendicitis, you can fight with anything. So You're telling me, dude. Um, <laughs> so talk, talk to me about that a little bit. When, when did you find out that you had appendicitis? Yeah, so I only found out, obviously, straight after the fight when we went down to the hospital and I like, obviously told him I got some pretty insane stomach cramps going on. But, yeah, it was there. It was there all fight week and I was just putting it to the back of my head like I'm hungry, I've got to cut weight, I, I want some more calories. And obviously just being that that mentally tough sort of person that I am and resilience and uh, – that come into play and yeah just push it to the back of my head and we've got a job to do and we'll deal with it after and obviously that's what we did we found out it was something a little bit more than being hungry it's that's insane i mean when you found when you were in the hospital after that wild fight and you find out that you were fighting with the appendicitis like well what was going on through your mind because like that could have been really really bad yeah, so like obviously the, the next morning after the fight, we sort of woke up and the team was keen to go get breakfast. And I was, I said, oh, I'm not really hungry, which is obviously quite weird. You've been dieting for a, for a fair while to make weight and get to the fight. And then I sort of, I had a shower and I looked at my stomach and it was super bloated. And I said to one of my coaches, like, I think maybe like the food we had last night is blocked like in my bear. And then within like maybe an hour or two of that, I started getting like, the fevers, the shakes, I was sort of in bed just shaking and convulsing and yeah, got down to the hospital and they did a CT scan of the st stomach and said, mate, your appendix is ruptured. Like you don't just have appendicitis. It's actually, it's blown up and you're like, now, now you have septicemia in your bloodstream. And like, they're like, if you flew home today, like you could have highly chance you could have died on the flight because it's 14 hours or so. So yeah, it was pretty much straight from there. It was like, yeah, antibiotic drips and fluids and all the stuff to start getting me ready for the surgery and straight in dude that is that is insane it's just yeah insane. it's just insane there's no there's nothing else yeah no other adjective about it man it's just it's, it's insane yeah it's um uh, it's definitely definitely one for a book when i write one in my uh future oh absolutely man um i did want to ask uh what did you learn from that fight Oh, I learned lots, right? So, like, obviously, going through all those struggles beforehand and the struggles in the fight week, and just knowing that I can, uh, knowing I can back myself and I can get through to the fight in any condition that I'm in, let alone if I'm in a good condition, I can, uh, I can really turn up and perform. So, knowing I can perform the way I did when I'm in the sort of the condition I was gives me massive confidence going forward into the next one. So, yeah, I learned lots, obviously. I learned a lot for the, the travel aspect to travel to the States and do the fight week and all the sort of uh, all the things that come with the UFC and the big event events around a whole fight week sort of aspect. So I learned a lot there, uh, which was awesome. And then, yeah, obviously now I get to do the whole fight week, but back here at home with less stress, less travel, less visa issues, passport, all that stuff taken out of the equation. And yeah, now I get to fully focus on skills and performance-based stuff and, yeah, turning up and fighting. And obviously the way I fight, I, I, I put a show on every single time. So that's going to be no different this time. And obviously plan is to come away for, with a stunning victory. So, 
Um, were you surprised that you got the contract? Um, yeah, I was surprised, but also I was happy with how I performed and how I, I held myself accountable through the whole whole ordeal and whole situation. So obviously coming straight out of surgery and talking to my manager and him getting Dana and Mick Maynard on the phone and having a little FaceTime and I'm sort of waking up off anesthesia and they're telling me that I got a contract. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty surreal and pretty surprising. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, I was proud of my performance either way, knew, knowing what I went through. So it, uh, if I didn't, I would still be proud of myself. And now I did. Yeah. I get to get to perform at a hundred percent. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. Um, finally, before we talk about UFC 284, I have a very important question. Where did the Turkish delight come from? <laughs> so uh, my father is actually Turkish. My mom's Australian. So I'm half Turkish. Um, my, my first three or four fights, I didn't really have a fight name. And then at my, yeah, my fourth or fifth fight, I see my the MC come out and said, oh, what's your fight name, mate? We're going to call it out when you when you walk out like all the all the normal stuff i said oh, i don't have one just roll with shannon ross and then i seen the mc talking to my coach and they're having a little giggle and carrying on and then as i'm walking out yeah like shannon the turkish delight ross and i look over my coach is laughing he thought it was the funniest thing ever so yeah we sort of just ran with it from there um it's obviously it's a little bit different than most fighters the the axe murderer and the, the serial killer and the the one leg cemetery and all the, all the crazy names that they are, the fighters have out there, but yeah, we like it. It's a little bit fun. It's a little bit different. And we've ran with it since then. And it's unique. And in a sport like mixed martial arts, your uniqueness shows through, right? So yeah, 100%. <laughs> awesome, dude. Awesome. All right. Well, let's talk about it, dude. Uh, Clayton, Beautiful. Rodriguez, Clayton Rodriguez, what do you think of the matchup? Yeah, awesome matchup. Obviously, the UFC are very smart how they put their matchups together. And uh, they obviously know lining us two up together is going to be fireworks for the card. And obviously, where they've placed us on the card is uh, one of those exciting fights right before the pay-per-view to get it sort of pumping and get the crowd on their feet. So I'm excited. I think stylistically, it's uh, it's a very good matchup. Uh, we've obviously been working a lot of stuff to to work in my favor and nullify his strengths. And obviously that's what a training camp is for and be pretty, pretty cerebral and smart. And yeah, I like it. I think it's just going to, it's going to bring fireworks to the show. Yeah. It's on paper. It's a ridiculously fun matchup. Uh, and you were right. The UFC knows exactly what they were doing when they put this one. Together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Fireworks are in all over. I think obviously the way I fight, the way he fights, it's uh, yeah. And being honest, so like I'm always going out there to be exciting and win bonuses and that sort of aspect. So lining me up with someone like Fleetson uh gives gives me gives me high hopes for a bonus that night. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Um I did want to ask, did you watch his last fight? Yes, so obviously we've been doing some study and watching some fights of his and yeah, taking away uh taking away some good stuff, what we can use, what we can nullify where we can uh, shine in this spot and obviously Cleetson's very uh even coming from the contender series he's very happy when he's on the front foot and attacking and got his distance and range and obviously with CJ walking him down and taking sort of that range and kick and distance away sort of helped uh helped CJ win that fight I think pretty pretty good so yeah did you think CJ won that fight or 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 do you think Cleetson won that fight I think it was a very close fight. I think it could have um, it could have went either way. Actually, um, I've watched it a few times, and there's probably only one round in there where you're like, "Well, that was 100 uh, percent CJ's round," which is round two. We had a fair bit of ground ground control time, and sort of sort of solidified that round. And then obviously, round one, round three were very close. Could have went either way. So it's uh it wasn't a it wasn't a robbery, but it wasn't. It could have could have went either way. I think. Yeah. Gotcha um fighting in perth in front of a sold out crowd in your ufc debut some fighters still haven't even fought in front of a crowd so how does that make, <laughs> how does that make you feel fighting fighting in perth oh like i've been saying in interviews since we've been doing this right like it's a uh that's an actual that's an actual dream come true right like 
for me, the debut on a pay per view at home in my in my own country with my own fans is like it ticks all the boxes for for what you want in this sport. Um, I've sort of tried to tried to explain it to people. It's a bit like a like your your wife's wedding day. She needs all the all the boxes ticked and everything perfect and everything like line up ex- like absolutely perfectly. And that is what this is for me for my fight career. It's like debut. 284 pay-per-view card the best of australian fighters and new zealand fighters pound for pound number one versus lightweight champ for the double belt it's like it's a it's a, it's a phenomenal thing man awesome dude awesome well at the end of the day ufc 284 february 11th how do you get your hand raised yeah, obviously, um, we've got some got some strategic game plans in place. I don't want to go into too much detail, um, but yeah, obviously, just will, persistence, resilience, pushing forward, um, implementing my game plan, and yeah, just being healthy for one, and being uh, being exciting for the fans, and just giving it my all, knowing that I can uh, trust myself and back myself in any any position in any any area, and yeah, sort of. My plan is to win everywhere. So that's that's the plan. Awesome. Awesome. Uh what do you want your 2023 to look like? What are some goals that you that that you've set out for yourself? I want it to look busy. So uh obviously there's been I've had a little little bits of gaps in between fights over the last few years with COVID and all the all the other stuff that's been going on. So 2023 a big word for me is busy so i want to i want to be busy i want to stay stay ready i want to i want to lock three three fights in i would love that this year um awesome to start early in feb and line me up for mid-year back end of the year and in, uh, in a perfect scenario no injuries etc um and yeah obviously goals are to quickly climb those rankings if i can knock three out three fights out this year to i don't see why i can't be in that top 15 by the end of the year and obviously striving for the top 10 next year 2024 i love it i love it um and finally before i let you go i just got a couple of random ones um the, yep. main, the main event uh alex volkanovsky islam makachev uh who you got in that yeah i've got alex volkanovsky obviously um australian through and through and i've seen uh seen alex fight from many years ago on the local scene actually cornered against him a few times and that didn't go too well for our corner, but uh, obviously uh, backing him 100%. Um, I got I was lucky enough to go down and spend about four five weeks with them them these guys uh, before Christmas training. So uh, yeah, I get to see how he trains and how cerebral he is and how smart he is and dedicated. And yeah, I think he's got all the tools to to win this fight. And I think a lot of people are going to be upset come Feb 12th. Awesome deal. Awesome. Um, and then there was a big flyweight fight last night uh, at UFC yes, sir. Three. Um, what what were your thoughts on the fight? And uh, I guess kind of just like the direction of, of the flyweight division. Yeah, beautiful fight. Obviously, Figueroa and Marino are very talented fighters. Um, obviously, both at the top of the game and top of the world right now. And yeah, the fourth fight, and obviously we've seen a, a draw and Figueroa win one and now Marino wins too. Um, obviously, yeah, you can't you can't deny any of their fighting skills and their ability. They both have power. You can see that they the crazy scrambles that were happening last night. I think there was like one moment where there was like three or four transitions that were just absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if the uh, the, the fans are seeing all that stuff yet, but I think they are getting a, a lot more uh, switched on to the game now. And it's uh it's opened the flyweight division up massively now, right? So Marino is now the champion. He just beat Kaya a little while back. Um, and now it sort of opens that whole division up. It gives it that little little fresh breath of air and that fresh life. And now we get to see what happens in the in the next six or twelve months. Yeah, it is it is gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun year for the flyweight division. Um finally, there is a another flyweight uh, Australian flyweight that's on the regional scene that you've had some history with. Um I, Steve Ersick, I was bummed that yep. that, that uh, he didn't get his shot on the Contender Series last year because of visa issues, but um, he is going to fight Eternal. Why do you think he hasn't got the call to the UFC yet? Um, I can't really tell you, man. It's um, I obviously had the exact same visa issues, but me and my wife, we hustled to fix these problems and fix the issues and uh, make sure we got 
our foot in the door and got over there. So it's like, I don't know if it was like a little bit of a lack on their end of fixing that stuff or what it was, but um, yeah, obviously Steven's very talented and he's uh, going awesome on the local, local circuit. And yeah, if he can, I don't know what he's got planned after eternal, if he gets signed or they're looking at doing the contender series again this year coming, but um, yeah, I think it'll be only a matter of time before he's there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Chan, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to plug your social media, plug any sponsors you have, and if you want to thank anybody, the floor is yours. Yeah, awesome, Alex. Thanks. Um, first off, thanks for having me and giving me your time. Um, yeah, obviously, my team, my sponsors, uh, I couldn't do this without you all. Um, yeah, we, we only fight by ourselves, but it takes a whole crew to get us ready and get us in the cage. And obviously, my my financial sponsors are a massive help now that I'm sort of taking a back step from work and they're supporting me in this dream. So thank you to all those guys and they know who they are. I won't drop any names because I'll probably leave one or two out. And, but yeah, so thank you to all my team, my sponsors, obviously my family, my wife, she's a, she's a massive pushing part of this, this whole sort of wheel. Um, and yeah, thanks to everyone. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.